Hello makers and fixers and welcome to Sarawak. I was contemplating making a build video of this project but decided that honestly you aren't going to learn anything by watching me fumble my way through learning to weld. So instead I decided to make this video about what I learned by learning to weld through a combination of YouTube videos and trial and error, particularly as someone coming from a predominantly woodworking background. When I decided to learn how to weld, I did get kind of annoyed by the welding videos where the guy who has five super expensive welders behind him valued at hundreds of US dollars each and says, here's how you're going to learn how to weld and proceeds to pull out his thousand dollar machine. So this video is partly caused by that because there's no way I was going to shell out that much money on something for a first try as it would be like buying a cabinet saw to try and make a birdhouse. Now first of all I'm a big fan of learning by doing. Typically that means that I will try to learn by making mistakes and either fixing them or learning how to avoid making them in the future. Most of my projects start out with an idea and get finalized along the way in much the same manner. However, when it came to welding, I was a bit more hesitant than normal about how to start out. I was dealing with electricity powerful enough to melt metal, at least that's how it looked to me as a novice particularly with no instructor over my shoulder pointing me in the more logical direction of saying yes but you aren't part of the circuit so there's no real problem unless you're licking the electrodes. So first up safety gear is always important. The usual stuff, gloves, shoes, shields, all that sort of stuff but a particular point of note for me was the shield that came with my welder was absolute junk. You can barely see through them at the best of times and so I went out and paid for an auto darkening face shield which meant that I could see what I was doing before I sparked up which made a huge difference for me to be able to actually place the wire where it was meant to go and that was quite critical for me as a learner. The original one was also a handheld one, meaning that I only had one hand for the workpiece, so having a nice helmet with the face shield type like I would normally have at the lathe made starting out much easier for me. So I would definitely recommend to any beginner going out and paying for an auto darkening helmet. There are some cheap ones out there that are perfectly fine to use. Secondly, the type of welder that I bought, I got an iWeld 200DI. It's a, a small portable inverter type that allows for both MIG and stick welding and you can swap the electrodes between positive and negative to allow for flux core wire as well as normal MIG wire. It has the gas lines and all that sort of stuff but you don't have to use them if you don't want to. So that was great for me as a beginner because it allows me to move up later on without having to lay out for another welder straight away. Now the only problems that I had with this particular machine, and it may not be the same with all of the other ones, but as a cheap one, this machine only allows you to control the volts and the amps but the wire speed is determined by a computer and you can adjust it up and down a little bit by altering the amperage to the voltage but the computer will work that out for you and it did make it a little bit difficult for me because everyone was talking about adjusting the wire speed and as far as I could see there was no way to adjust the wire speed on this machine so I did get into a huge mess for a while but in the end I sort of worked out that this machine had settings for a 0.8 millimeter and a 1 millimeter and the wire that came with the welder was a 0.9 millimeter and so after I ditched that wire and got some 1 millimeter wire all of a sudden everything just sort of started working properly again 
so definitely be aware that the wire thickness could be a problem in a cheap welder if it doesn't give you full control of the settings. But probably the main thing that I wanted to bring up is that while wood can be a very unforgiving medium for mistakes, metal was just the opposite. If I didn't get a weld just right, I could grind it back and take another pass at it and just keep going until I got it looking good. I burned through the metal a few times, but with persistence I was able to rebuild the metal, flatten it out again and make it look perfect. And even if I set an angle wrong when I was tacking the metal together, you can cut it and tack weld it again and it's a really different experience compared to wood where if you cut it too short or you put a hole in it it can be quite difficult to cover that up so that it looks nice in the end so it was a good change for me to to have something or to learn on something that was a much more forgiving material so this is the end can you teach yourself to weld well Yes, you can probably teach yourself to do anything except fly, but my biggest concern is can you do it well enough and safely enough that you don't have to have an experienced person standing over your shoulder. If you're cautious about how you go about learning these things and you possess the ability to analyse and correct techniques that have resulted in an error, then you can learn how to do this fairly safely. I didn't get any serious burns doing this, but I did get hit by weld spatter a few times, which does sting. I didn't drop any molten metal on my toes, though I could certainly see how this could be possible to do if you weren't being careful. There's a lot of damage that could be done through ignorance or carelessness when welding, or with any sort of woodworking tools that I also use. And I don't really feel that the risk of injury is any greater using a welder than using a jigsaw. So long as you use a welding shield and gloves, because that's the two things that are going to get hurt the most. If you don't use a welding shield, you're going to hurt your eyes. And if you don't use gloves, you're going to burn yourself. It's it's that simple. You, you are going to burn yourself because it is really tempting to pick up a piece of metal that you've just welded and have a look at it. So wear gloves. I will leave a link to the channel that I found most helpful in learning to weld in the comments and I hope that if you're interested in learning to weld you will check out this guy's channel because he sure helped me a lot. And in the meantime, I'll continue to practice and improve to the point that maybe I could actually feel comfortable showing the process of what I get up to. So thanks for watching, everyone, and have fun making things.